Hey, you go live, baby. I was talking to uh, one of my followers. She was, she went online and uh, she was giving us a huge shout out. Oh yeah, nice. You remember who? Dunko. Ga ga. Gal Galunsi Nas. Okay, cool. All right, we're live, brother. Here we go. Yo, welcome back to the Thursday podcast, guys. We're here every Thursday. You already know, man. We're not gonna miss a Thursday. Like you could put, put money on it. We're not gonna miss it. We're here every Thursday. Welcome back to the pod. And of course, you have here Frankie, your co-host host, and of course. <laughs> Your co-host, it's your boy Peter, every, every Thursday, globally, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Central Time, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Y'all know what it is, man, the Make It Rain podcast, where we talk about stuff we don't know, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Double check, please. I got new equipment. Um, little HD. You can see my imperfections. As you can see, my beard is messy. What's going on? My mic is not on, dude. I feel like I'm distant. Really? I can hear you on my end. Ah, this, it's a good. Yeah, check your settings, brother. I gotta check my settings, really, actually, um, because it might be on my end. It's a good. Yeah, check your settings, brother. I gotta check my settings, really, actually, um, because I feel like I'm um, on a speaker. Perhaps it is my settings. There you go. You think it's my? There you go. You think it's my settings? We good. Do I sound good? Yeah, you good. We good now. Okay, good. Whew, scared me for a second, man. Scared me for a second. I sound good. Remember, the, remember the days of just having like episodes of just silence. <laughs> man, uh, damn! I think we had like three of those dogs. God damn! The, the lagging, the lagging the episodes. Lag too, man. Damn, brother. That was tough, man. That was tough. Yeah. How's your How's your week, man? Man, how's um? I, heard, I see you got a new camera. Cost me six hundred bucks. Well worth it. So, so one hundred percent. The lag was because of the camera. Like, cause I was working off my oh, phone. Okay. My phone wasn't directly connected to the computer. It it was off of a website, and then OBS um, projected that website. So that's yeah. that's what that was, and that's where the mm, lag came like from. Connect- so, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Um, but a week was good, man. Uh, went by real quick. We had a snow day, so it snowed a lot here in the Midwest. Twice actually on on last Tuesday and then the Saturday and then so I didn't go to work. I think half of Friday didn't go to work and then all of Saturday and then came back to work on Sunday. So got a lot of videos done. Did you get PTO? No, I either either we use PTO to to get paid or take it unpaid. I took it unpaid. Oh, yeah. okay, snow day. Yeah. Reminds me of a uh, high school dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had a snow day since high school, dog. Good times, man. Good times. But uh, pretty uh, good, man. How, how pretty good. Snow? Eh, you know, honestly, it, it wasn't really that bad. Um, like in terms of like volume, what was really bad was road conditions. So like it was very slushy, and then um, dry snow was able to pack on top. So then you couldn't really see, you know, how good or how bad the the roads were. And then right. when they did salt it, it was just slushy. So then. You know, and it was very cold outside too, so everything was freezing over, and so you're you're just driving on slush and ice, and yeah. And, and my my tires, I had the four wheel drive, but man, my tires are shit. Damn. Um, I hit I hit the curb, um, and like I was so you know in these terrible weather conditions, I like to I like to take the element out for you know a, a rough drive, and then I was leaving uh, I was exiting the parking lot, and then I hit the curb. <laughs> that's how bad that shit was man i just left and then i was like oh shit and then i went around the block like two three times and then enjoyed it yeah you, you gotta make sure it's okay 
Oh, yeah, yeah, um, that's fine. Yeah. That's dope, man. Um, ho- quick question from Yang. Uh, what's the topic today, Peter? Hey, shout out to Yang, man. We missed you, man. I haven't seen you in like a few episodes, dog. Where you been? Yeah, she, uh, she, you keep asking what's the topic for today. We never have a topic. <laughs> there's, there's never been a topic. There's, there is a description that you, that you can answer. Uh, what, what's the description? Write down what your longest relationship was in the comments for a shout out. Shout out. Um. So this weekend, uh, I met one of Yang's friend, uh, C. Oh shoot. Um. Uh, yeah, it was at the the LA Mong New Year, and you mean she was like, "Hey, Yang," as in the one in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she okay. um. Her friend wanted to take a picture with me so she could send it to Yang. So Yang, did you did you get that photo from C? Um, but yeah, so uh, it was it was cool to uh, talk to her and oh, wow. kind of just relate to uh, to the pod. That's pretty cool, she's man. Like, yeah, I know. She's like, I know Yang's always on the podcast talking to you guys, and I was like, yeah, she's always trying to talk shit to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, her friend is out here. Uh, so hopefully you saw the picture. Uh, she yeah took she's... a personal photo, so we sent it to to her. That's cool. Yeah, Yang said she saw it. That's cool. Tight man. Dope, dope. Yeah, we end up. Uh, but the new year was cool, man. Um, I uh, did the after party. Uh, it was really successful. Okay. Um, a lot of pictures. Was fun. A lot of videos. I didn't. Okay. I didn't take any professional uh, photos. Um, nothing on your videos. phone. Just. just... Yeah, just just okay. yeah, videos on the phone. Um, nice. but it was cool. It was cool. It was a good turnout. Uh, everyone had fun, and um, I broke even. I didn't. I don't think I. Ever, I think I may have lost money, but at the end of the day, like, it felt so good to just host an event and yeah, man. having everyone enjoy the atmosphere. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it was successful. You know. It's good shit, man. Yeah. Keep 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 at those events, man. You know, like, I mean, like, uh, like that's a skill. You know, to gather people is such a high value skill. So as you continue to hone in that skill, you know, in the future, it's only going to benefit you when you need to either promote, you know, make it rain, or or you know, when you, uh, it, it's going to be very applicable. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's 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 true, man. Um. I, I love it. It's just, it's just I love giving people an experience, um, especially like a VIP experience. So this is actually the the thought that I had. I met a uh, five star chef that was Hmong. Oh, okay. Um, have you have you heard of Four Seasons? Mm, the guy in Minnesota. Big four guy? Seasons, like he's a big guy, a though, right? Oh, oh, the Four Seasons. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You you heard it right? So it's yeah. a pretty high end hotel, right? Uh, so he's a chef over there, oh. and he has his own menu. Is it? And is, it uh, is he? Is he from Minnesota, huh? or I'm thinking about somebody else, maybe? Hmm. Good question. He's been in LA for like I think nine years, I believe. Okay, no, we're not. But he's about like this guy loves food. He's got his own like recipe to things, and um, so I think I think I'm gonna set him up where it's gonna be a networking event, only private invites to like 20 people to this dinner oh shit and yes have like special eight course meal served to them at malibu beach i think that, yeah that's that's the my next uh event i want to do more of a luxury networking event like have 20 like corporate people or like just boss people come eat dinner and then after hours we can uh, sell like uh, low end tickets. Have people who wants to connect with those people come in later. Nah, oh, like a convention, man. Like a entrepreneurial uh, convention, or we because t- there's a lot of entrepreneurs who well, who actually do those type of co- conventions, man. Um, sort of, but it's 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 gonna be more personal. Uh, I also thought about getting um. So I know this guy who does uh meditation and and spirit, um. Like seeking in a way, not seeking, but just like just like meditation and self love. Yeah, uh, I was thinking about doing that and then doing the dinner, and then after that cocktail hours. So a good example, right? This is just an example. How getting directors and producers to come eat dinner and let them connect, and then afterwards have 
the actors and seniors come after the cocktail hours so they can all network. That makes sense. Anyways, it, it, it's um, out of my wheelhouse, man. I'm I'm clueless, brother. I'm sorry. It's, it's just it's just a, a high end uh, uh, networking. I event. can't offer any um, insight. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a good. Um, I haven't I haven't be been out event. since uh, COVID. So <laughs> I got I got to get you to come out, man. And not even that, I have uh, something uh, planned for uh, Sabi D too. I met I met the uh, the owner. Okay. Uh, this past weekend, the showrunner. Um, or is yeah, it like, or is the it... actual guy that runs Sabadi Fest. That's cool, man. Hell yeah, dude. He's like this tall uh, Laos guy, uh, tat tatted dude, probably like six feet. That's good. Yeah, man. that's dope, man. The right. next generation taking over the, you know, these type of cultural events, man. I think that's real good, man. Doing it big yeah. too. So, um, you know, this is just another thing, another, another idea that I want to eventually give out to the youth um, is connecting the, doing a, yeah, a convention center for the youth. Anyways, that's that's something else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited to host these events, uh, to make it beneficial for everyone, make it a networking event and um, have fun and taste good food and network, you know. Tight. Uh, thoughts on the Sabadi Fest? You know, I think Sabadi Fest uh, for the Southeast Asian people is going. It's it's big. Um, I, for example, for like Thailand, uh, like the Thai people, or Laos, Cambodians, Hmong people, like we need this festival. Um, versus like Filipinos, I think Filipinos are already like up there. Like Jay Koi, yeah, Joe Koi, yeah, Joe Koi, yeah, that guy. He's yeah, Filipinos. They they've been up there, you know. They're more the guys, Filipinos, um, Koreans, Japanese, and Chinese. I think those four have been up there. You're talking about in showbiz, the showbiz, or like yeah. what are you talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah, showbiz. Um, hey man, we got Brenda, we got Brenda Song, cuz we got Brenda Song, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know man. And what's that other? Uh, what's that? Other? We coming up. We coming up. It's not that. It's not that we're not, but we we, we coming up. Okay. You know. What's that? Uh, what's that Mon guy? Uh, the one that uh, was in Mulan. I forgot his name. <laughs> your boy, dog. Dua. Yeah, Dua. Dua, your boy, dude. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I, did I tell you, I interviewed him for the at oh. the Long Beach. Oh no, you didn't. You interviewed him. Yeah. What? Yeah, I interviewed him. That's cool. I gotta man. send you. I gotta send the clip. I gotta send the clip. Heck yeah, dude. Um, but I think I think this is great. I think how do how do you feel about Sabadee Fest? Me personally, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't go to big events, but uh, I think it's real cool what they're doing, like including all of Southeast Asia. I think uh, the marketing is real dope, and then just involving the communities of these different, you know, Southeast Asian groups, you know, uh, and and kind of doing like a tour, you know. I think that's real cool. Yeah. I, I think it is too. Like I think it's the culture to it is so different, man. Like compared to like eight eight rising. I think that one's cool too. Um, but it's I think that one is targeted to, more towards a younger crowd. Yeah, I, I haven't looked too deep the, in all uh, this, by the way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like I yeah, said, this, this is a podcast like about you know shit that we don't really know <laughs> what we're talking about. This is one of those things uh, that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> fair, fair. I think I think it's gonna be good, man. Um, I'm planning to uh, throw a after party for Sabadi Fest too, so look out for that. Damn. Um, Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, that's that's where everyone is gonna be at. And um, if I throw the one of the best parties, man. Yeah. 100. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's gonna be good, bro. Uh, did you did you see the flyer? I said uh, on the flyer it says uh, M I R presents i gotta check that out no i didn't i didn't see LA. yeah yeah I, had I, was, to uh, a little... I was busy uh editing videos that's what uh yeah what, MRR, uh, what presents <laughs> if you if you know what it is you know what it is you know what i mean you know what i mean so uh but it's gonna go everywhere bro that's that's the brand so on the uh the flyer i didn't 
I don't see no flyer. You though. see it on your on your page? Oh, I don't. It's it's, it's damn. Oh. I, I'm opening up my. You're gonna have to show me now. You're gonna have to show me later. Okay, I'll show you later. But yeah, um, I have it on there. Uh, it says MR presents LA Mount New Year's after party after hours. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and read chat real quick. Um, Yink says. I think it's a great success, but unfortunately, more people are too narrow-minded and let one opinion of someone else messes up for everyone else. What do you mean by that, Yang? I mean, I think more people are. I think just, just this generation, our generation, is going to fix, going to fix that, and I think that's kind of where like Sabadee Fest comes in. Um, I don't, do you do you remember when they did um, the Monk Fest? I think Mong Mong H H M F. You talking know. about the concert, the Mong concert, where they got a bunch of yeah, yeah. I remember that where they toured and then they got um, the performers from overseas over. Mm. Yeah, is that what you talking about? I thought I thought that was pretty big. I think so. They did tour. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. But man, I think the South is even bigger because we yeah. have all the Southeast Asia, yeah, Laos. Man. Island, different cultures, yeah, combining in one. So I think I think if if, ex good. if execution is on point every time, marketing and execution, dog is gonna be big, man. It's gonna blow up. You know, I might even come out. Yeah. Hey, if uh, if I get a deal, dude, you you're coming out. If oh you yeah, get a deal. You're oh yeah, I, I have to. Yeah, yeah, I have to, man. Yeah, most likely I am, dude. Okay. So then I come coming gonna, out, coming out of the yeah. closet. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it work, man. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. You know. So what they wanted to mention too, dude. So at the this past weekend, um, I was partying, and oh, nice. I was sober as fuck. Yeah. Let me say this, man. It feels so good. Yeah. To be sober. Yeah. And partying, dude. Awesome, dude. Like, it's it's a whole different feeling, dude. Like I I can control myself. Uh, I can present myself how I want to be presented. I'm not sloppy. Like, I'm professional. Like, I I love it, dude. I'm like, damn, dude, I got to be. This is 2024. This, this is my year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's finally Party my is year. Over, baby. I yeah. don't need to be good, under the same influence. You know what I'm saying? I'm me. Frankie's here. Yes, yeah, sir. It's good, uh, Sober, man. It's good um, to hear, man. It was, it was good, man. It's a good feeling. Um, I'm going to read chat real quick. Uh, I love the lineup. I don't care what the others say. Yeah, lineup is good. Uh, eight years for Philip. Oh, Philip was dating uh, Francis. Do you, remember, do you remember Francis? Yeah. Yeah, he lost that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she, was, she was a good girl, bro. She was like, she <sighs> went to school. Uh, and she she loved Philip. You know, I I never and I never I never talked to Philip about that. You know how what happened and how did it happen and why why it happened. You know, I never had that I forgot, conversation. I, forgot I didn't want to talk about it. I was uh, very uncomfortable. I'm, I'm I'm uncomfortable right now mentioning it mm. just because I know. Yeah, he 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 loved her dearly, man. He he loved her a lot. They loved each other. I'm not sure why it didn't work out. I think something about okay. I'm not I'm not, I'm not gonna. <laughs> oh, Philip! Philip! Um, Philip answered. <laughs> Philip said, "Got her masters and left." <laughs> oh shit! Got her masters and left. God damn, mm. bro! Fuck! Damn. Shit. Yeah, one of these videos I heard today. We got. I'm gonna dedicate one of these videos for you, oh Philip, because it's gonna relate to what? <laughs> what we're we doing here? <laughs> um. Ying says, uh, but you don't always have to need alcohol to have a good time, correct? Uh, who parties sober as fuck? Not even a little buzz. Nah, yeah, it's it's not worth it, man. Um, I don't, I don't know, it's just that you don't need a drink. You just don't need a drink. Um, yeah, to be talkative. You know, it was fun. Um, more, more, more shot there. Damn, like that? More shot there. Oh. That's funny. I wish I could read better Mong, man. Oh, uh, Ant said, when's the next time we're going to do poker? Because you want to answer that? When's the next time we do poker? 
I don't know. Me and Peter's time schedule is um it has uh, been it, so tight. It has changed. I apologize. We've um been adding so much into our schedule for twenty twenty four. Um oh, poker is not one of them. Uh let me let me just put that out there. Yeah. I'm going to school now. Back to school. Uh if you guys don't know, I'm starting school next month. So that's gonna add on to Oh dude, I think this this schedule. is the first time you announced it, man. Frankie's going to school, oh, yeah? cuz. Yeah. You told me, but, school, but we haven't announced it officially. Oh, uh, yeah, going back to school, guys. Um, it just it just felt right. Felt awesome, like a good time. What you like I'm in a better mindset. What you going to school for, Doc? I'm going to cybersecurity and uh, AI designing. That's um, that's what I'm going for. Awesome. And um, I remember, dude. I remember when I first went to school, though, in in, in uh, when I graduated college. Dude, I smoked so much weed. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Congratulations, yeah, I swear, Frankie. Yeah. I deserve I this. I was like, I always wondered. I was like, how come? How come I can never focus? In back then, I remember I smoked so much weed, dude. Like I, I miss school. I miss days. Oh, oh you talking about Just during smoke. school? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, during school. Yeah, dude. Like, it's so bad. Uh, I'm in a way better mindset right now. And was that it's, with, it's, it's the right time. Was that with Johnny B? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that motherfucker got me high as a kite every day behind the, uh, the oh, truck. Shit, <laughs> behind the truck. Yeah, oh, in the truck. Yeah, I remember that ice cream truck. Yeah. <laughs> with the dogs. Oh, shit, Man. that's so funny, dog. Okay, hey, uh, shout out to Gablo and C. She said seven years for her uh, relationship. Damn. Seven years. How come you ain't married yet? That was that was her longest relationship. Uh, I think she's single now. But Ooh. Uh, what happened? Yeah, let us know what happened, Galunsi. Let her know what happened. What happened? What, happened? Yeah. what happened to that? Seven years. I think she's pretty young. So I think that was like a high school thing, and then yeah, thirteen. But you definitely lost lost something there. If, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, you know I'm not. I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> Um, I know Frankie, you your sister is a friend of mine. You got your sister in Kalea. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kalea, that's my sister. My sister Kalea. She's yeah. What what do you do? Holy shit! You know, I mean, I've never like actually stalked you. Do you know what she does? No, I've never went on her went on her page and like. She's a human her. being. That's what she does. She human beings all day, every day. I bet she does makeup. Just probably look at her profile. Yeah. She look I like think it. she does makeup. She look, I, either makeup or eyebrows. She looks like an eyebrow mm. kind of one of those two. Mm. True, true. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriends and I are so loud on Facebook. How do you not know? Hmm? What does that mean? Uh, maybe. Oh, she goes live. Her. Does she go live? Uh, I, don't know, I think she posts a lot on 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 Facebook. But I don't know. Maybe do maybe my. Facebook doesn't really. There's a lot of Packers stuff on my feed, dude. Like, by the way, congrats to the Lions making it to the playoffs. Barely, dude. God damn. damn. Shit. That was a good game, though. I was, uh, I was rooting for them. Oh, they're not gonna get the hey, Super I'll Bowl. I'll see you man. at the uh, NFC Championship. You're not gonna make it because Packers are gonna beat you guys. That's what, that's what's gonna happen. Probably that might. Lions be choking, dog. <laughs> I just be choking when they shouldn't be choking, now. you know. I don't want to talk about it, man. I'm with them. I don't want to talk about it. All right. Okay, so hey, they still they still in it though. I don't want to talk. They still in it. I uh, I'm not gonna... a Cowboys fan like Anthony, then that's a different story. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they got they got. Uh, so Galo say, Go, Golun C said, after that seven year relationship, I got into another five year relationship. <laughs> Damn. Damn, how old is she? Oh, no, I think she hit like uh, 30 or 28. I think she's 28. Wait, what? 28. The math ain't mathing. Uh, but so, we weren't compatible yeah. anymore, so we agreed to break up. My love life is horrible, LMAO. I forgot how old she is. Mm. I think she she probably 29, but looks young. I think I remember her mentioning something like that in the past episode. But. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking to her on her live feed. She's totally down to do e date. Oh yeah, tight. 
Yeah, if we if we set her up on E Day, what do you think? Oh, she said we gotta do an episode. Like that. She said she's twenty eight. Yeah, yeah, an E Day would be tight, man. That's 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 been that's been in uh, our to do list. It's just it's just a matter of executing that. Is is uh is harder. Right. It's harder. E Day it is. It's harder. Um, uh, we're gonna we're gonna aim for two weeks from now. How about that? Let's just let's try to do that. Oh, before Valentine's, yes. Oh, Valentine's episode. That'd be nice. Yeah, that. Let's do it. We're doing it. We're doing it. Okay, cool. that'd be awesome. Yeah, just get with uh, her. And Goblin Three. You, we're gonna reach out. So look out for it, and we're gonna. She we're said, gonna set you up with, with a man. She said, "Okay, sounds good." Hello. Oh shit! You gonna get yourself some dick soon. <laughs> some virtual, <laughs> some of that virtual dick. Mhm. Mm <laughs> mhm. You know, flash him. Flash it. Flash it out. Be good. Anthony said. Anthony said, "Chill on the on the Cowboys." <laughs> dog. Yeah, he does not want to talk about oh, that. Oh, dog, man. dude, Rand not. Randy, Randy be posting the funniest shit, dog. It's like a bunch of shitting on Cowboys, man. Damn, every time, every time Randy posts that shit, dude, I just think of Anthony. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> I know, bro. Same, same, dude. I'm like, damn, dude, <sighs> this motherfucker is. Bashing on the Cowboys. Oh, dude. I know a, this is direct to to Anthony. Randy's too. a troll. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes Randy be tagging Anthony, dude. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know, man. Seen that shit all the time. Um, oh, cool, man. Uh, that's a great introduction. Uh, with that being said, you ready to go in on these videos? Oh, oh, let's let's get it. The first video, guys. Any particular order, man? No, not really. Okay. They're all different, so. Okay, let me let me save the the one I like for the second. All right. Oh, you already kind of are you? There's a new a little bit. What do you think? Cool. Here we go. Let me know if you can hear it. There's a new study out tonight about the water in plastic water bottles. The National Academy of Science says the bottles may contain at least 100 times more microscopic pieces of plastic than previously thought. An average of 240,000 nanoplastics per bottle. Scientists say there is not enough evidence to detail any long-term health risk. A spokeswoman for the International Bottled Water Association says the study lacks, quote, standardized methods. Plastic. Plastic's bad for you. Don't eat plastic. Got it. Easy. Yeah, our life is surrounded by plastic, dude. Drink. I'm, I'm drinking plastic right now. This is kind of this is kind of plastic. This is uranium. Uh, that's that's this is a kitty cup. Partially plastic. Uh, you know, man. Uh, I think you have to have money to escape plastic, bro. Not really. You know what I mean? Like it's, this is BP. glass. Water. BPA free, dog. BPA free, made in the USA, cuz. So I, I'm good. What does that even mean? <laughs> it means I'm good. I haven't googled it yet. BPA. I know. I know. There's something about like the plastic stuff, but like it's supposed to be better. But at the end of the day, like this it's is, still it's still plastic. This is one of those moments where I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. I know plastic is bad, but I'm not consuming plastic intentionally. That you that you don't know, yeah. That you don't know, yeah. You know, there's probably plastic in our rice, man. Because of how it's stored, our rice. I know you eat rice. You look like oh. a, you look like a motherfucker that eat rice. Uh, I used to a lot, um, <laughs> but I, I eat brown rice now. But I don't like the brown rice is so bad. Like it just made me not want to eat rice. It's bad. How's how's brown rice bad? Because of the color of its Maybe skin. No, maybe because I cook it like wrong or something, but it's it's just always like hard and shit, and, and it's just and more water, dude. It's either really hard or it's soft. Okay, a cup it's and a half. Never really in between. Depends on you what know. brand. What brand you buy? Um, I bought this Thai brand. It's a uh, apart from a uh, man. You gotta be Asian store. It was a be. Thai. It was a Thai. Okay. You know what? Well, brown brown rice is all it is is just the husk, not taken off of it. Cause you take the husk out of it and then you polish it with water, then it becomes white rice. That's what my grandma said. Is that, wait, wait, wait. 
That's what my grandma said. Me off right now, because uh, because she harvests right, she still does it. I think I don't know if she did it this past season, but um, the last season I helped her in this. She was saying st- shit like that, right? Is that you have to roast the the husk off, and then once you do that, you have to separate it, right? The the little flip thingy, you separate it, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then you wash it, and then it's white rice. What? No way, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'm mind blowing on. There's no way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Yes, sir. Yes. So I do I'm know something. Some this is one of those things where I do know something. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad we're sharing uh, facts. But uh, plastic. So, you know, I used to buy tons and tons of plastic water bottles just because that's how we drink water, you know, um, here at the house. Yeah, yeah, and then I was yeah. like, you know, because it's filled to water and they put in these bottles, right? And then, you know, I, I started seeing right, shit yeah. like this and then I'm like, okay, microplastics is a real thing, right? And then mm-hmm. these bottles, mm-hmm. they're not the, they're not the, you know, most luxurious bottles. They're just bullshit bottles, right? That they yeah. suck yeah. these waters in. So what I chose to do yeah. is uh, I hit up the homie Culligan Water, uh, water plant. Uh, they distribute water um they okay. have water products and okay. so they put it in these okay. five gallon jugs right so it's similar concept but these bpa free giant five gallon jugs and then that's how i get my are water. they are they glass are they glass jugs no they're, they're still plastic you still you still you still with plastic we gotta we gotta upgrade to the to the glass no, nobody, glass nobody jugs. delivered glass jugs. Stop. Yeah, dude. There's, there's a company called. Uh, I was like, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's people that deliver oh, glass. Damn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They, they more uh, higher end. Damn. Um, it's like water, water fresh, spring water. I need, uh, I need, I, a, I'll, I'll yeah, I okay. need to jump a few tax brackets before I start getting glass water. Shit, you know, that's all good, dog, man. I'm going to I'm going to put us on glass water, you know. I'm going to put us on glass water. There's a deal. We're going to we're going to go on glass water. No, you know, you know what I used Same. to do? No. I don't know if you did this, but what I used to do is I used to buy Fiji water and I would just always fill that shit up just to let everybody know I'm drinking Fiji Damn. water. <laughs> hey. I used to be that like conscious about, you know, my image, you know. I'd be I'd be like a, like like one of those big ones too, you know. <laughs> big ass Fiji water. And it's like the, the it's like all like messed up. The bottles like already messed up, like wrinkled up. <laughs> the inside of it starting to grow algae. Is is green on the inside? <laughs> yeah, you know that bottle's been around for a minute. The the what is it? Uh, the the wrap is starting to fade. <laughs> yeah. You know, I I did that I did that oh, for a shit. second, but I didn't I didn't do it for long. Oh, okay. uh, I remember I, I did it for a bit, but I didn't I didn't like do it for like more than a week. That's good, man. I did it. I did it quite. I did it a little bit too often, back in the day. Oh, man, that's funny, man. It's about uh, it's about the image, man. Um, you know, uh, it's it's crazy how um like image is so important to to people. I mean, I mean, you know, in 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 life, right? So, social like, it's, social it's, currency, man. Social currency yeah. has always been important. You know, first. Yeah. That, I mean, they call it first impression, right? So important. Mm. Do you do you think do you think do you think status uh, matters more or money? Hmm. Ooh man, that's a good question, man. It, I think it really depends, but I think generally, I say, or, or I would say, I'll say, okay, I'm gonna give you two answers, general and then my answer, right? So for general, I would say status matters, right? Um, so general answer. The reason why is because like you're trying to. Um, people treat you different, right? If they know your status, if they know you're important, then they'll be more careful around you, right? Even around like our managers at work, right? Like our our, our our direct manager, ooh, we can kind of have a relationship where we dick around a little bit, and then their managers, like, oh, we 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 straighten up, <laughs> you know. So status, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, so that's general. But for my answer, money. The reason why is because when I get to a status where I have like enough uh, enough money where like you know i can really be out of the closet you know then that's where that's where i want to get to it's called fuck you money right 
to where you can just say fuck you and then, and then nothing will happen <laughs> you know there's no consequences i want to get to that point you know what i'm saying that's my answer money matters over status because i don't need status I got, uh, I got the money you know what i'm saying uh i think i think this is like an andrew tate uh podcast and they're, they're asking the same question oh, okay um i think he chose status because even the the richest billionaires like when they all gather together like if you have status you know you you stand out all, all the billionaires okay you know so everyone has money we get it we have money we all have money but if you have status yeah it's it's different like it, it, imagine if you have like beautiful women around you that's that's status right anyways um it's interesting that's interesting. Okay, what about you, man? It's status or money? I think status, I think it, it kind of goes hand in hand. Yeah. To be honest. Because if you have status, a, a good example, right? Dave Chappelle, right? That boy can go anywhere okay. and get things for free. That's such he a go great anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, like he won't know comedian. That's such a um, great example. Yeah, he can go anywhere, but he, he doesn't have that much money. He doesn't really care about money. He he makes a decent amount of money. He just he's not, he's not like a billionaire, you know what I mean. But he makes a decent amount of money where like he doesn't really care about money. He just cares about himself, and like and sounds like a lot of money. his perk. Sounds like a lot of money. But he's but he's not like rich rich. You know what I mean? Like he's not like he's not Illuminati Bill rich. Gates. Yeah yeah. <laughs> um, or maybe he's he enough is? to you know be independent. Uh, okay. He's not Jeff Jeffrey Epstein on the list rich. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I, no, I, I would go over stat. I would go status, status over money, because okay. uh, money comes and goes. Um, I think status, status is something that it's more uh, prideful. I feel like more like something that you can own up to and be like, "Yo, that's that's what I did. That's what I do." To each their own, brother. That's what it is, man. You know my answer. My answer is always gonna be to each their own. My PC answer. What what what? To, what, what does that mean? To to each their own. Like like if that's what you oh, like. To each their own. To each, yeah, to each their own. To each their own. Yeah. You heard of that term? What do you mean by that? Oh, it's like no. whatever whatever you want to do. Like to mm. each their own, right? So if yeah. whatever you prefer to do, I, I want to live my life like this way or like it's like, okay, I'm going to do me and you do you. That's that's what that term mm. means. You never heard of that? That's a, that's a hella old one. No, first time. Uh, hold on. Let me... Um, Read the chat real quick. Um, so Yang said brown rice is hard. Yeah, man. If you don't know how to cook brown rice, like, it, it has to be the perfect water too. Because I've I've sogged up uh, brown rice too. Oh yeah. Maybe it's my cooker too, man. Maybe it's my rice cooker. Um, Young Yi, hey, what's up? Shout out to Young Yi, uh, the Patreon supporter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We love you, Young Yi. Uh, we always love seeing our uh, Patreon supporter and shout them out. Uh, love you, bro. Glad you're on here. Uh, Philip, but Peter is right about the rice. Mm. Yeah, I, I told you, I man. Mean, I every every once in a I while, I man, I know what the fuck I'm talking I about, man. I didn't, I didn't say I didn't believe Peter. I was just surprised myself. <laughs> what what gave it credibility was your grandma. You said your <laughs> yeah, grandma. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where, yeah, yeah. that's my that's yeah. my source. That's that's my source. Yeah, that's <sighs> yeah, straight from the source. So um, that's hilarious. I believe that, you know. Oh, oh, look, we got ping here. Ping, uh, you're looking around, man. Ping. Right in the comments. Uh, he, he says, uh, it says Ping's watching. Oh, hey, okay. shout out to Ping, uh, another Patreon supporter. We love you, bro. We love our Patreon supporter. Trust me, guys. We, we're we going to give back. We want to give back soon, you know. And um, that's our goal. Me and Peter's goal is always to uh, give back to the community. Um, but right now, we, we need help from y'all. And, like, the support from the Patreon is... is so big and we really i really appreciate that yeah. so shout out to ping too shout um, out to, shout out to ping. next segment yes sir here we go this is the video i like and i'm gonna i'm gonna express a little bit on this one too i like this one all right here we go I'm getting sick and tired of you pranking me about this booger in my nose. I hate this type of joke. That's an American Bang, thing. I'm a, I'm a that is not a Trinidad a thing, and that is not my I'm type a, of humor. I don't know where you come from, 
But the environment I come from, we keep our hands to ourselves. So right? I can't do that? So, so what I'm going to tell you is, stop. You're going to try to get a wreck? Keep your hands to yourself. Mm -hmm. Watch your tongue. Because I can literally pull over right now, and you'll be taking an Uber for the rest of the ride home. You're not going to do that to me. Hey. No, I'm going to give you a serious hit. Yeah. About to get off right here. No, I'm not getting off. Yeah. Right here. Bilal, you, you have to be a madman to stop and decide to do it like this. Yeah, this is the highway. Just because I give you a little tap. Yeah. You thought I was joking. Let him know. Let her know. Okay. Uh, you you want to give a back back story? Do you know the back story of what this is all about? Um, or is it just a I think video? It, I think this is from uh ninety days of fiance. fiance, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's where yeah. this is from. Yes, sir. Good. 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 What do you What are your thoughts? Hey, man, you gotta set that boundaries, man. So, so this is yeah. not the first time they're meeting, right? They've already met before, and then. Uh, what is it? The first time they did actually met, right? She came to the U.S. and then he like, um, what is it? Uh, in this episode, he he brought her to the house that he grew up in, right? Which was the shitty ass house. And then wait, wait, so you you seen it? Yeah, yeah, yes. I seen the episode, man. It's a great episode, man. Oh, and then uh, okay. and then so right, she was like, oh, she was kind of disgusted and she was upset because like when when he came over to her place in overseas. He was very, you know, well dressed. Well, well, he's still well dressed and well put together. Uh, he had name brand stuff, and then so he, you know, looked good. And, you know, when he, when they met at her place, and then now she's in, you know, in the U.S. And then now it looks like kind of, you know, of a front, you know. But he did this to test her, and then so they went through that phase already, right? And then and then now this scene, right, which is kind of they've really comfortable now, and then. You know, she's smacking him around, you know. And so it's kind of like, hey, you know, I I let you know what I'm all about. You know what I'm saying? I love you. And then now you're going to smack me around. It's kind of like, nah, that ain't cool, man. You know what I'm saying? Is that the first time that she's like smacking him or what? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember the episode 100%, but I remember the beginning of, of how they met and all that shit. But, but, um, but yeah, man. So I would say, you know, very, very sternly, you got to set your boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, let, let, you know, each other know, right? You couples out there and friends and family, really. Um, yeah, set boundaries because if you don't, then, you know, people are going to comfortably cross your boundaries because they don't know what your boundaries are. You're not letting them, you're not communicating that piece to them and how serious you are, you are about it. You know, are you serious enough to enforce yeah. these boundaries of yours? Because yeah, because like the, the another saying is, you give them an inch, they take it a mile, you know. And then so, so you have to be stern, you know. And I, I think as a people pleaser, it's it's that's that's kind of hard to do. As a um, introvert, that's kind of hard to do, you know, to be confrontational. But you know, you you gotta, you have to. I like well I like about that video is that he set the boundary when it happened. Yeah. And not letting it slide. Yeah. You know? Um I think that's a really important key element because if he doesn't change it or set the boundary right there and then, yeah, yeah she would have definitely taken it to a mile for sure. Yeah. Did so did he end up dropping her off or what? I don't remember, dude. Probably. Uh, or probably not. I don't know. But man, like uh, you know, I'm the I'm the type of person where like, like if something crazy happened to me, right, or something you know confrontational happened to me, I'm just, I just take it in, and I'm just kind of clueless in the moment, right? In the moment, I'm just like I don't know what to say, what to do, because I'm just like, what the fuck is going on, right? And then like maybe the next day, I'm like, you know what, I should have I should have said something. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I come up with things to say. I was like, man, that bitch, fuck, you know, try me again, you know. But yeah, yeah, it never happens, you know. So I'm I'm those type of people. <laughs> like, you know, it's funny, like, like go ahead. Yeah, it's I, I have a similar experience too. Um, I'm trying to be better at it, you know. Okay. Um, if I if I don't say it then, then I shouldn't be losing sleep over it. Yeah. But if it happens again, 
I got, I got, I, I got to do something. You know, I'm ready. You know, what I'm saying? I, I, I got yeah, all yeah. these comebacks now. I'm ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there are times where uh, men or people are gonna test you. Like, there's, it's gonna be a time, and it's gonna be more times. And then again, like, you know yourself after all the experiences and the like, sleep you lost, it's not gonna happen again. You know. Yeah. It's about loving yourself and yeah, setting your boundaries. Um, so I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, when I was at um. I was at a club um, and I was working with one of my, I was a manager at a dispensary and um, you know, as, as a manager, you're, you're a manager, you have, you have uh, the status up there. Right. Uh, and then uh, one of the partners came and we, they went clubbing with us and you know what he did? He, uh, he grabbed my head and he was, he, he freaking like, Hey, oh. Hey, what's up, man? Bro. I, I was like, I fucking, I was like, I fucking, what his fucking head? I was like, hey, don't fucking do that shit again. And after that, like, he kind of like, whoa, dude. And like, don't fucking do that shit, man. Like, you really got that. You know, it was actually um because the fact that like, there's there's a lot that was on the line too. You know what I mean? Like, bro, I'm the fucking manager, my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, that's how we should treat ourselves, though. Like, you are who you are. Like, you should not be disrespected. Any way, any shape or form, and yeah, just let them know. And trust me, actually, the respect comes. You'd be surprised how much people respect you so much more. Oh, you should have surprised. You should have pat him on the head. You know what I'm saying? You're like, I'm doing good, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so uh, <laughs> let, me, let me ask this. Let me ask this. So, um, what do you think? What would happen uh, if that situation was to happen? You do you think? Just to just to see how he, how you react and if you act, react negatively and, you, and then that's when you can be like see see how this shit feels you know what I'm saying it's not cool mm-hmm. don't do that to mm-hmm. me yeah you know? I don't know Dude, so so I I like how we're kind of talking about this topic right here because this is something that I feel like a lot of people have challenges oh, yeah. you know over you know I think like having to practice over this because like to be honest man I actually don't know what to do you know but like you like you said just like overnight sleeping and losing sleep on it and then when it happens again that's when things start to change but we need to practice this kind of stuff man and just especially yeah on. especially in leadership man you know i think yeah. uh you know people will test you when you're in the leadership role um and you just address that shit on the spot i think um it's a it's a practice but it, you know it's one of those things for me anyways where it doesn't happen often, you know? And so that's why, like, when it does happen, I'm just kind of flabbergasted and, like, you know, I don't know what the fuck to do in the moment or, or to say, you know? Um, because, yeah. it, I mean, I mean, for, well, I, I you know, I, I'm sure it happened plenty of times in my 20s, but, like, I, I don't remember those sh- shit anymore, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm doing good presently, you know? And so it's like, I don't know, like, pick, pick your battles is what I want to say. But at the same time, it's like, you know, I, I, you know, how do you practice that? You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's some yeah. people who are really good at being confrontational, and then when something happens, they can pop off, you know, and and and, and come with a comeback, or, or or you know, they react, you know, I guess appropriately, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I think, I think on top of that, I think, I think, um, like I'm too laid back. I feel sometimes I think that's kind of why like I um I stopped smoking weed too because like when I smoke weed do like anybody can do anything anything to me and I'll be just be like super chill with it but at the end of the day do like like you said like I, I lose sleep over these kind of stuff yeah, yeah. you know what I mean yeah. and like I'm tired I don't want to be laid back no more man you, you know, know like like, for, I gotta put my- like like for me like I think a part a part of my problem is that like um I'm not clever with words you know I have to really Mm. you know think things out and then plan my words out you know and then um so i think like in those situations i'm throwing i'm throwing hands man <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm not smart enough to throw yeah. words but i'm dumb enough to throw hands you know <laughs> you, you so know, like, you hey man, man you know what you do is disrespectful you want to settle this right here <laughs> you know <laughs> 
that's so funny, dude. Because <laughs> I think that's such a uh, that's in the Hmong culture. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every yeah, every Hmong yeah. New Year's, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, shit, that's funny. Um, but you know, throwing hands is not is is it's not a bad oh. thing, too, man. Like, I mean. It's it's really not, bro. Um, it's situational. It's, it's, it's situational. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if yeah. like someone cut in front of me? I'm like, hey man, hey man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, whoa, chill, dude. You know, a 13 year old kid. <laughs> that's funny. Oh shit, man. You know, you know that's that's one of the things too, right? I think <laughs> an incident happened at the playground when um my oldest kid was like maybe three, I think. Like another older kid pushed him. And then I was like, man, what the fuck do I do? You know what I'm saying? Instinctually, yeah, yeah. I want to beat the shit out of this fucking kid, you know? But then yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, I obviously I can't do that, you know? But then I'm like, so I chase him down to make him say sorry, right? And then um, I chased the, the, the guardian. Unfortunately, the parents wasn't watching the fucking kid. It was a, um, a babysitter, right? And so, I, you know, unfortunately, mm. I had to talk to this dumbass babysitter. And then I made the kid say sorry, you know, and then and then I'm just like, you know, I said to the babysitter, kids grow up to be adults, you know, you get it. And then she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, boo. you know, and so and after that moment, I looked up, can I sue the parent of the kid? <laughs> turns out, you turns out you can, <laughs> turns out you can, uh, but, um, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, like, like those you know, a parent's instinct, you know, is to do, to protect the kid, you know what I'm saying, from harm. And if it's protecting your kid from another kid, it's like, okay, so I don't beat the kid up. I beat the parents up, you know. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. parents weren't there. So I had to make the kid say sorry. Chase that motherfucker down. <sighs> Maybe like trip, trip, trip the kid or something. Oh, man. Dude. Oh, little something. Hey, man, I wanted to, man. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, that's a tough situation, man. That's uh, that's good parenting, though. Um, you're looking out for your for your kids and and. Oh, dude, there's parents around too, man. I was like, man, I don't give a fuck, man. I'm about to beat the shit yeah. out of somebody. So, um, we don't go to that park anymore. <laughs> Fucking yeah, uh, uh, Timmy wounded. Dog, 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 I thought of everything dude i was like man dude i'm gonna i'm gonna carry the uh pepper spray next time i'm gonna i'm gonna carry a blade you know what i'm saying i'm gonna buy a vest man i was i was like man dude shit dude <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah parenting is um uh, and I, I can't imagine being a parent but i think it'll be a cool journey um oh, but you want to go ahead and move on to the next segment yeah man that was a good that was a good talk man yeah. I, had, I had a i had to get that off my chest man I, thanks for listening we had um. I, hey, I'm rooting for you, man. I'm rooting for that kid to get, get beaten up. Oh, dog, man, that was a look like a. It was a white boy. He looked mixed, but I'm gonna call him white. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, anyways, anyway, that's irrelevant. Uh, next video. Here we go. Okay. Why are you so self-aware and so stuck? Okay. There are two versions of self-awareness. There's shameful self-awareness and loving self-awareness. What you are stuck in is shameful self-awareness and you haven't yet learned how to take all of your awareness, all of your capacity for intellect and transform that into loving awareness. Shameful self-awareness comes from the part within you who's addicted to being ashamed, who's addicted to feeling bad. It probably comes from a childhood part of you. It probably came from the time before you were seven years old. It's the version of you that learned that in order to change, you need to be ashamed of yourself. Or it learned that if you make mistakes, you need to be punished and the way to earn belonging and love back is to be punished enough. So now what you're doing is using your high capacity for intellect to interpret yourself in the world in a way where you can punish yourself into oblivion in hopes that if you punish yourself enough, you get love and belonging. The problem with that is that it never ends. What you're 
you're going to have to do at some point is choose to end your addiction to feeling bad and choose instead to spend the rest of your life feeling good. To practice loving awareness where you can be aware of the same things that you're aware of when you're in a state of shame, but instead learn to relate to all of those things lovingly. You can be super smart. Use your awareness of all of this information to actually increase your capacity to love. Mm, that was a lot. Yeah. That, well, that, that was a good one. That was a good one. Uh, you know, I think um, that's an interesting way he put it. Um, because I think, like, for me anyways, you know, the, the, a lot of the reason why I live the way I live is is to honor, right, uh, uh, to honor my parents and my grandparents of their sacrifice and then... Um, legacy is very important to me and becoming a better father because like the the punished piece that he mentioned really struck a chord with me you know the 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 shame piece really struck a chord with me because like while my dad was alive and and with me i didn't treat him the best you know um because we we had our you know it was it was a very complicated relationship and then so a lot of a lot of the reason why you know I live the way I live now, right, is because of that shame, you know, that, oh, you know, I should, I didn't understand him at the time, how hard it was to be a man, to be a father, the head of the house, going through financial struggles and, you know, not having anybody to turn to. And then so, so that's where a lot of my shame comes from, is from, you know, how I treated my dad, my parents, I should say, not just my dad. Um you know, and, and so that's that's always kind of like lingering in the background as I'm, you know, trying to be the best that I can and, you know, loving on my mom and my in-laws and my wife and kids. And, you know, and, and it's, that's that piece, that, that regret, that shame, um, I, I'm holding on to, you know. Um, so I think <clears throat> I don't really know where I'm going with this. I, I just I just I just resonate with that shame self-awareness piece um is it healthy uh probably not you know um because i can't quite let go of that memory of of oh man i treated you know my dad like shit when he was alive you know um and so so yeah that's where i'm at i should i should probably see a therapist for this but i'll wait a little well, bit longer um i'm uh, i'm in charge so um that's 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 uh that's deep man i think um i don't think you're gonna solve it you know any like today or any, i think it's gonna be uh more of a time um but i think step one is definitely being aware of how you feel about it you know and um being aware of that sh the, the shame and and, and kind of trying to re reverse that and I and I think I think you're showing it to um, your kids and and, and, you, and your mom and, and and your your wife now is you're showing love to them. So it's uh it's, it's I think it's a cycle, but um, but it seems like yeah, um, almost like regret, you know. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. That's that's really like yeah. the only thing I regret in life is just I could have I should have treated my dad better, you know. And then so like, and then and then you know being a father now and then taking care of my wife and kids and my mom and like I'm grateful for what my parents have done. It, you know, this kind of realization has allowed me to be grateful, you know, of, of my dad and of my grandparent, you know, of of my dad, right? Because that's where my trauma is, right? The regret is. Um, but I still, there's still that pain that I, that I hold on to, you know, and then, so I don't know. I don't know if, it, I, I don't think it'll ever go away or maybe through with therapy, I can, you know, cope better. But, but it's just, it's, it's like a real, it's like a, it's like a pebble in your shoe for me, you know, like, like, yeah, that's how I would describe it. Um, yeah, I, 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 um, I know how you feel. I can empathize with you, but I, I don't know the answer to that, to be honest. Um, I wish I wish I knew. Uh, 
But yeah, that, that's hard, man. I, 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 I couldn't imagine. Um, um, I think, I think, I think people's gonna have regret, no matter what. Um, I mean, I, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, that's tough. That's tough. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you should uh, check out a therapist, a, a real therapist, and. and See see what that does to you. Yeah, because I feel like it's kind of been you know, like you said lingering uh, around. So I don't know. Um, maybe some meditation. I don't know. Maybe something, something self reflection um, and, and reversing it. Yeah. I don't know. I think a therapist would be. So nice. let, me, let me ask this. Let me ask this. What can? What do you think? What's the closest thing that you are doing to fulfill that regret? And it kind of, yeah. They, whenever you're doing, you're like, man, like, you know, I'm grateful for for him. Like, what, what's, what's something that that you do? Uh, well, that? you know, that I'm just trying to be better every day. You know, I, I think I'm 100 percent sure that's what my my dad would want. It's just try your best. Son, you know, take care of your mom. Be patient. You know, love your wife, love your kids. I mean, we're, like my dad was. A we're guy. in the moment. We're in the moment, like in in the past month, that you like, yo, like, yeah, my my dad would be proud of me. Like, what what did you do? I think just with how I'm living my life, uh, I'm I'm sure he's proud of me. I'm I'm trying, and I am I am making you know strides to become better. You know, so I mean, shit, dude. You know, I like. Like um, being responsible for my mom, dude. I'm like, dude, dad. I know what you're going through. I I kind of have a glimpse of what you went, you know, what you <laughs> went through your whole yeah. marriage. You know, sorry. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to I'm trying to get this duplex, man. But my mom is like hella against it. <laughs> oh really? Why's that? Because yeah. it's so it's so affordable to live here, dude. And she said that, you know, and, and she she's not wrong, you know, with with uh, the affordability piece, you know, I'm I'm definitely mm-hmm. hella able to save money, but I'm not just trying to save, you know, what I'm saying I'm trying to grow, you know, and so. But. Yeah, um, yeah, she, you know, it's 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 good that she has that side, too. But, you know, uh, eventually, man, you just got to, you know, make up your mind, you know, yeah. so. She'll, she'll, she'll adjust. She has no choice. <laughs> you know, she, she living with she'll me. See. She had no choice. She'll see. Yeah, she'll but see yeah. the future. She'll, she'll see it. Um, Wait a minute. What's, let's go, man. What's your, what's your take on the video, dude? Uh, I had a really good thought on it um, before. Um, but now it's, it's, just, it's, um, it's gone. So. <laughs> Yeah. All right. right. Um, (laughs) Guess we're moving on. (laughs) What? You know, uh, not to bring up like any any like substance, but um, but I remember I remember uh, I took uh, uh, one of the substance called uh, DMT and uh, okay, man, that that I don't know. Did I tell you about this experience? Did I get that? You 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 told a story um with with Siga that episode. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it it really cared a lot of um trauma a lot of um shame that i did as a kid oh, okay yeah i remember uh going through that and and just kind of flying over those experiences that, that i've never thought about i never like oh but i i'll think about it like once in a while uh on my own maybe i'm pissing i'm thinking about it um but yeah we flew over that and i really cared it for me man um it was just like it's okay like you can you can move on and that was yeah that was a very spiritual that's why i was trying to go back and answer more things but i I just couldn't get back in it um but yeah um how to only regret is is, it's a hard thing dude i think it it um i mean i i still i feel like i have regrets on some things too and handling it it, it's um it's a lot. It's a lot. Cause like my well, my biggest thing is that like my dad is dead. I can't go back 
and say, hey, dad, sorry. Yeah. You know, I'm going through this and this and this. I'm learning this and this and this. And I feel this and this and this. And then, you know, and I'm realizing, oh, shit, you're going through that too at that at that certain time in your life. I can't have these conversations, that, that type of conversation with my dad anymore. You know, that, that opportunity is not in it for me, you know. And then so so for for a, for a second, you know, that I, I, I shared those moments with my grandpa. And he died too. And now I'm just like, oh shit, you know? Um, so so then, you know, I'm right now I'm kind of in a weird space, you know. Uh, or or I would say last November and December I was in a weird space. But so so that's you that's know, what that was, you know. Yeah. I kind of see that it's um it's benefiting you a lot because I feel like this is the reason why you move how you move, you know? Um, I'm not saying that you know, like when you, if your dad is living, um, you will be. I think, I think, I think. This is why you're doing this. You know what I mean? Because you, you, because you can't have a conversation with him anymore. You know what I mean? And that drives you to do better and be better. You know? Yeah. Um, hundred percent, dude. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I see a lot of um, I, I mean, though it's, it's a tragic. Um, thing, but well, I see a lot of good in this. Yeah. Unfortunately, my dad and my grandpa had to die for me to grow up. <laughs> oh um, man, dog. Yeah, yeah. I think in in our past, uh, one of our past conversations, people only grow because of four things. You know, it's because uh, you learn things or something bad happened, and, and then you know shit like that. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm the guy that people had to die. Yeah. To, to learn shit you know oh man my, my, my parents always say this too like oh like no not everyone shows up to your wedding but everyone will show up to your funeral okay yeah all right okay all right yeah anyways um but uh meaning uh people show up when bad things happen and and when good things happen to celebrate you know you have people are too busy. Okay. Anyways, um, next segment, uh, we're going on to the intermission. Damn, we today's episode is kind of long, huh? Yeah, Jeez. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a good introduction. That's why people were hella talking in the beginning. So seven fifteen. Cool. Do you see what Philip said? <laughs> he said, <laughs> "Philip said Peter used to test me." <laughs> I, I remember. Uh, oh shit, dog! I remember Philip and, and and you were always like um, go back and forth, man. I know you were, you were never in like a happy state. What <laughs> I mean, Philip went back and forth. At, uh, no, dude, Philip was the, uh, always bullying me, dude. Fucking Philip yeah. was a bully, dude. <laughs> yeah. He was always hazing me. That's what it was. It was hazing me. Damn, you know this is one time, Philip. Uh, it was at the shop. Philip uh, blew compressed air in my ear, right? And I was like, "Man, yeah. you stupid son of a bitch!" You know. And uh, I stormed off. You know, I was like, "Dude, that's fucked up. I could have been, you know, you can make me deaf that way, right?" And then he felt bad and eventually said, "Sorry." But, <laughs> but damn, dude, that boy was always hazing me, dude. God damn. <laughs> yeah, Philip, man. <laughs> Oh, I think shit. something happened between uh, me and Philip a couple of times too. Oh like yeah, I had, um, yeah. I think um, was it when you yeah, guys yeah, did, I, did it together? <laughs> no, it was actually uh, when we were at oh, school. Okay. Oh um, wow, okay. I remember, yeah, uh, we went to tech together, and I remember I was taking a nap, um, and then Philip like slammed a a book or something, <laughs> and uh, like I fucking like woke up and then I got fucking pissed. I was like, man, yeah. what the fuck? Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, set, I stormed out. Man, set that um, boundary, baby. Set that boundary. <laughs> yeah, stormed out. Uh, that was the last day of school, I think. Oh, too. Oh shit, dude. Yeah, yeah. I think that was so something happened during during tech, uh, oh. and then I stormed out. That was the last day. <laughs> <laughs> so Philip, Philip's still watching. He said, he said, yeah. we. So he's talking about me, right? He said, "LOL, we would finish a project, and Peter would find a way to fuck it up." <laughs> Oh shit, dog! Good times, Philip. <laughs> Good times, Philip. Chap. <laughs> um. Oh 
fuck. Man. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember visiting you guys, and uh, you you were never in a happy happy state. Oh, so so both Phil- of y'all are stressing. Both <laughs> of y'all are stressing. Philip was pushing my buttons, man, that motherfucker, and I was pushing his buttons too. But Philip said we played a prank and hid your car. Oh, dog, I, re- oh, yeah. I remember that shit, dog. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- that was right. Yeah, yeah. They hit my car, Ooh. and uh, yeah, that's what it was. Man, you, you was so pissed, bro. I remember that shit, dog. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck. I remember. Now nah, I remember. Now nah. I remember. Now. Nah. Man, shit. Good shit. Good shit. Shout out to Philip Chad. Anyway, I love you, uh, dude. You're like the you're like the yeah, older brother. The older brother. I wish. That I continue to never have. <laughs> Always just fucking hazing me, dude. <laughs> yeah, Philip. Um, Philip will test you, man. He will test your buttons. But he, the thing about Philip too, he's a good friend. He oh, will. He will back you up. 100%. Yeah, he. He'll be there. Um, I, I empathize with Philip all the time. Um, so shout out to Philip, man. You know, I think um, that's the thing about relationship, right? Like, like you know, you're tight when you. When you um, can yell yell at each other's face, you know what I'm saying? When you're at each other's throat and you, you can make up, you know, after that and, and still have a healthy relationship after that. I think those those type of relationships are the ones that you want, you know? Yeah, I think uh, I think if it's like a one-time, like one-time thing, but if it's a reincurring kind of thing, I think that's, that's a different relationship. I think like when the argument starts... We have to respect each other's boundaries from there on. Yeah. But if it keeps on getting crossed, I think that's where, like, you know, okay, maybe we just need to, you know. Well, it, well, it's a matter. Us. It's a matter of working through those things, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and and uh, a lot of people. Uh, that's what what defines the homie to a friend. You know, like the homie was always gonna come back, but yo, man, my bad dog. Like, let's let's work it out. But our friend, like they they just if if it's not their way, it's, it's the highway kind of thing. And, you 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 know you know who's there and who's not. Hundred percent, dude. Shout out to, shout out to Philip, man. Uh, love you, brother. All right, here here's the next video, or or I guess we're starting my segment, right? Yeah. Here's the tough part. What was her job at the beginning? Was it bitch and complainer or cheerleader? Well, originally she was the best cheerleader. That's why I chose her forever. She made me feel like a like the fucking best. Well, at what point did it change? Because guys do what you cheer them on to do. But the Mm -hmm. more you disregard, the more you complain, the more you go like, well, it wasn't done the way I want it to my way, the less they're going to be like, I want to fight for you. Mm -hmm. If you start taking your guy's kneecaps out, he stops fighting for you. Well, I don't want to be accountable for that because he should be stepping up. He should be standing up. You hit him in the kneecap, though. You're kneecapping the guy that you want to stand up, and you're the reason he's doing it. How conflicting for this guy? It is conflicting, but I don't think that I don't think that men are communicating that. I, I just who, think that men I, who are isolated, I, men who don't have mentors, men who aren't taught the way, men who are, don't even know they can be warriors. Right. The only influence that these guys have, and this is a very important sentence. The only influence and the only person that they want happiness, the only person they want to feel joy and connected, the only person they want intimacy and love, the only person that matters is their girl and how important her opinion is and what opinion is she giving is also important. And as soon as she's the nagging, complaining one, the most important resource in his life. Oh, my God. What a. What a cliffhanger, dude. He was about to say, he was about to drop some bombs, man. Damn. Um, that's tough, man, because um, a relationship is, is, is a job, dude. Um, <laughs> and it really is. I remember, um, I remember, uh, this is, this is just, I hate to bring up my ex, but this is the only way for me to kind of explain the situation. It's kind of been a reoccurring thing <laughs> on our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, so um, I remember like she loved everything about me at first, right? And then as 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 we went on, of course, I remember um, the last conversation we had, dude, 
I was silent the whole ride. I, I, I purposely was silent because I want to see how much she can talk. And she literally mentioned everything that she loved that she hated now. Like every little thing that I did was 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 a joke or, or it was it was something that she didn't like. Oh. And um oh man, like it was too late, man. It's one of those things like you really gotta fix it. And both both of the guy both parties has to want to fix it and be better and not just I'm, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying at this point. Because yeah. not thinking about it just gives me a headache. Um, I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your 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 partner, right? Your your rib, you know, or or your your partner, you know. You, I mean, it's supposed to be somebody. I mean, the dude said in the beginning, a cheerleader, right? Somebody who lifts you up. And then now, in that scenario, she was tearing you down, just shitting on you, you know. I understand the frustration, um, you know, like when, whenever, you know, my wife or, you know, especially my mom, you know, always just trying to, like, I'm going this way, but then, you know, my mom taking me this way, wants me to go this way, or, or if I'm trying to, you know, lead the family this way, and then my wife is just, oh, uh, nagging, 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 nagging. It makes it hard to go this way, you know what I'm saying? So, not, not quite the same, you know. <laughs> scenario as yours but but you know have you have you tried um to communicate that yeah yeah well i mean we 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 we're we're, we're working on it i, I wouldn't say okay. it's totally squashed but you know there's some areas that we both need to work on yeah what's something that that has improved uh hmm. i would say I would say that uh, <laughs> I guess I guess we're both improving. Like we're making an effort to self improve. Like like a lot of it before it was just kind of me telling her how to be, and then instead of letting her you know self manage that piece, um, yeah. And then she's been very trusting of of my decision so you know the duplex thing she you know uh, she wants a house you know not a duplex but she's been trusting of and I've, I've been communicating that the duplex isn't the the last house we're ever fucking gonna get you know maybe the third house will probably get a really nice house for us but but so so we're communicating on that piece on our goals and how we're gonna make things achieve um so i would say those are like two things uh, i'm still trying to um be better about um, um, how I speak, cause man, when I when I get emotional, or, or you know, like I'm I'm emotional when uh, when it matters, right? Like the self improvement thing is, is is really big for me, because if because right, I think I think in one of our episodes, man, I mentioned that if because like your 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 homies, we're all at the same level, we're, we we all eye to eye, but when I start growing. And how I think and how I move and how I do things and then my finances are put together. I start having more kids and then I start realizing that, oh, you know, I can't fuck around because my dad's not around anymore. I, I start to grow and I don't hang out because we don't even speak the same language anymore, you know. And so that's why, like, it's a big deal for me that, like, my wife makes time to grow as a person because, if I'm 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 gonna be talking about dreams and goals and my next moves and it's not gonna make sense to you and that we're only gonna grow further apart. So that's why it's it's very important and I've been kind of in the past you know I've been really just kind of honored you know you gotta grow like this but you know just kind of at least giving her but now now I've, I've been giving her tools you know so that way she can make those um, growths on on her own you know and and of course. When we talk about our dreams and goals, we make time to talk about our dreams and goals. And then, you know, we had that time to share how we're growing and moving. Um, but man, yeah, I, I used to be, I used to, I used to shit on her. You know? <laughs> I'm like, man, there's this one time where um, it happened. I think, uh, I forgot when the fuck it happened. Last year, late last year, where I, I had her because she was like questioning, you know, 
what the fuck I'm doing, right? With with our finances and our goals, right? And then uh, I was like, I was like, okay, if you're gonna question me, then you gotta write a report on how you grew in a year, right? And then so she writes the, she takes like I think like two three weeks to write the report, and then I didn't give her no feedback. Until I got like hella pissed, and I was like, "By the way, your reports suck." <laughs> I was like, "I was yeah. like, dude." I walked away. I was like, "Dude, oh shit, dude." <laughs> I was like, "Damn, yeah. dude." I was like, "Man, damn." Thank yourself a hole. <laughs> damn. I was like, "Dude, fear, man, you st- you a piece of shit, dude. God damn, bro." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can agree to that. Oh god damn. That, that was that. terrible, dude. That was so terrible, dude. Oh man. <laughs> Philip Philip Chef said, damn Peter a shitty person. Oh man, I have my moments, dog. I have my moments, man, where I'm just like super trash, dude. Oh man. So so I just I still got a lot of work. You know? Um I, I have a lot of work. I have a lot of work. But, um have you talked about it since then or what yeah 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 yeah. We, we definitely made up and talked about shit like I mean, we we squashed beef pretty 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 quick and pretty pretty good so so that's something that i'm proud of me and my wife that that we do like when we ever have something yeah. like that blown out you know blown up then we give it like two days of of just you know continue to do life but we just not you know until our emotions calm down then we then we get back together and make things up but man, oh man, I'm under. How do y'all sleep? I'm under. Right? I'm under. How do y'all sleep? Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, we still sleep in the same bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, man. Um, that's um, uh, that's cool, man. Um, you know, um, there's there's always growth, and that's that's the joy of life. It is truly to grow with yeah. that. True. with your partner you know 100 percent. so well, well that's why that's why i said the statement earlier is that like it's nice to have a friend like philip where we can be at each other's throat like uh, unintentionally or 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 if intentionally or unintentionally i don't know what a, whatever right but we can be at each other's throat we can have an argument or disagreement and then agree to disagree right um yeah, or, yeah. or or work things out squash things and still be happy you know um to have a healthy relationship so so that's why like it's i think it's important that like you're gonna go through life you know and you're gonna come face to uh oh my god son of a bitch battery this is the first time um peter (sighs) has done the uh, the camp um well i'm still here but uh (laughs) do you you have uh external an extra battery no, you know, I, you know, you know, you can, you know, you can charge the camera while you're at it, right? Well, mine, mine's not connected through USB. Mine's connected through HDMI, and then so, but I do have a. You don't have a. You don't have a. What is it? A. What is it? Um, the charger? Android cord. Uh, I do. It's connected. I think. I think it's. I don't think it's charging fast enough. That's that's what it is. This thing. Yeah. Okay. Because this is what I do on, on my camp. Because I, I know with battery dies a couple of times. Son of a bitch. Um, so I, I charge it while we're at it and I have a fan Son on too. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. You ready? Um, did you want to turn on your regular cam or what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. Gonna... I think I can... Uh... Let me figure this shit out. Yeah, uh, okay. All right. Um, should we end it? Man. Wait, let me show you. Uh... Oh, man. Yeah, Peter's cam is uh, we're on. Uh, we're waiting for Peter's cam, so he's gonna try to solve it right now. Nah, nah. But we might, we might, we might just end it, um, and then we'll figure it out again uh, next week. Let's do. And, let's uh, do one more video, Doc. One more video. Okay. Yeah. It's just it's all you though. I me, mean, I mean you're here too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the voice. I'm the background. I'm the. 
I'm the camera right, guy. Cool, cool. Well, I'm the camera guy. How about that? Okay, so last video. You work hard, get good grades, go to college. I want to go to college. I got good grades. I overachieved. That's right, she did. Debt is good. Debt is so good. So much debt. I can totally save up and buy a house and start a family. Oh. I want a family. Oh. Starting a family means you need two or three jobs. You can't afford to buy. Oh. You can't afford to rent. The used cars cost as much as the new ones. Oh. It's weird. Good debt is good. This head of my class is too expensive. You work hard, get good. The system did not. Rent is freaking insane. Breaking news. Everything is terrible. Does it have to be this way? What if it was different? It's always been that way. We've got to build our way out of it. Yeah. Put control back in the hands of the people. Not the bureaucracy. A system with less paperwork. No waiting. No lines. Permissionless. Just because you're born into a system doesn't mean you have to live with it. Just because you're born into a system doesn't mean you have to live with it. Coinbase nailed this commercial. I think if we're 45 and younger, we just need a new system. We need a new roadmap for the American dream. The old American dream worked for so many people in the older generations, but for us younger generations and future generations, we have to change the way we think about college, home ownership, and just everything across the board. So let's work together, let's have hope, and let's make a change. Huh? Huh? Um. You know, I think I think it's always been um, like it's kind of been the whole 2020s, right? The whole like changing and 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 now, oh yeah, dude. being able to afford certain things and oh yeah, inflation. Um, but I think it's gonna hit like soon. I'm talking about like it's already kind of hitting right now, but I'm talking about like major changes in in about five years, bro. Like, I'm talking about like major changes like queen but coinbase is probably going to be one of the biggest exchanges um crypto nft i mean i i still believe in that shit like it's 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 gonna come back trust yeah um yeah uh that commercial is early like it, it's happening but it's 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 giving us a message it's pretty dope though um, yeah. we're fucked. <laughs> no, that's how the beginning of that video was, though, no, man. It was all like, you know, all these false beliefs, you know, and then, and then halfway in the video is all like, you're fucked, you can't afford shit, and then, and then that that little end piece was all like, okay, there's a little bit of hope, you know. I I think for me, man, that that video was all about breaking out of the matrix, you know. Like all that mm. beginning and the beginning was all that it was all programming. We grew up with this generationally, mm. we pass it down when it's like, oh, you know, we can change things. We the people, you know. If we organize mm. and get our shit together and or and you know. That's why that's why that's why I mentioned in or, you know, in the beginning is that like the skill to organize and to gather people is 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 a valuable skill. Um, I, I like that because um, that's why independent artists is, is such a big deal because they're not under a label. Like, example, Russ and Chance the Rapper. Yeah. Like, they make their own movements from working hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like, yeah, we the people have the power. And having that, like, social media has a big impact on um, independency, you know? Yeah. Um, people have their own businesses, independent businesses, and doing fucking well. Um, you, you, they don't have to rely on uh, the nine to five job. Uh, you can have, you can start your own business and do well, and be independent. All it just takes is just hard work, you know. Yeah. Effort, execution. Cool. Love that was it, a, man. That was Love a good. Uh, see, that was, that's a good. Uh, what is it? A good last video, eh? Huh? Yeah. yeah. This is um on a positive. A good video. A good good podcast today too. Um, but I think next week, uh, have you thought about, uh, hitting up Zoe? Did you hit up Zoe? I, I did not know. Okay. Okay. Right. Maybe we can talk about it after the pod. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which. Yeah. Hey, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for, uh, you know, always supporting us and, um, pressing like and share.
Uh, with that being said, you already know what time it is, man. It is the end of the podcast. Once again, shout out to the Patreon supporter, Frankie, first and foremost. Um, Young Yi, the OG, Peng, oh, and yep. Johnny. Uh, shout out to you guys. Shout thanks you. thanks for you know giving us uh, your money. We love you the most. Uh, everybody else, we love you guys too. Uh, with that being said, every Thursday, Make It Rain Podcast, 8 p.m., uh, Central Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Any last words, Frankie? No. Um, have a beautiful January, and uh, we'll see you guys next Thursday. Peace. Peace.